hello uh, this is the new lecture in this particular lecture actually we are going to discuss about the current trends in uh, surface modifications uh, of the nanomaterials or maybe about the nanocomposite coatings so here actually uh, this is called the part 3 because in the first part 1 lecture we have discussed about the doping first two uh, part two we have discussed about the functionalizations and part three we are trying to discuss the rest of the modification methods by which uh, nowadays we are going to modify our nano composites maybe the nano fillers or maybe the nano coatings so here if you remember that in our last two lectures last two last lectures we have discussed about the doping then last lectures we have discussed about the functionalizations and these particular lectures we are trying to go for the other properties maybe some kind of grafting will come or maybe some kind of chemical reactions will come so these all are the different types of methods which is not included into the doping part or maybe which is not included into the functionalization part that part actually we are going to discuss into the others so here what are the other trends actually so, when we are talking about the other trends, it is only divided or maybe subdivided into several parts. So, first one is called the adsorptions. So, by adsorption technology, how we are going to modify our surface or maybe the nanoparticles. Then second one is called the self assembly. So, by self assembly materials, we are going to modify our nanoparticles. Then surface modification based on polymerizations. So, actually we are going to do some kind of polymerization techniques over there by which we can modify the nanoparticles. Then the fourth one is called the surface modification based on organic reactions. So, here by this organic reactions by some doing some chemical reactions we are trying to modify the surface of our nanomaterials and then surface modification with inorganic layers so one case we are doing the organic another case we are trying to do it inorganic then other techniques for the surface modification stills there are some uh, residual applications or maybe the functionalization process are left which we are trying to discuss in this particular section so, first is that adsorption. Okay. So, before going to start that how we are doing the modification of that adsorption, first let us know that what is the principle of the adsorptions and how we are classifying the adsorption process or maybe the how adsorption process is going on into the materials and how we are denoting all these things. So, adsorption is a material properties as simple as that. So, it is a material physical properties by which a material can attract some impurities or maybe some other materials towards it. So, now there are two things one is called the absorption another one is called the adsorption. So, there are two distinct difference in between these two that is absorption and adsorption. So, first when we are going to discuss about the absorptions. So, absorptions means this is our substrate materials or maybe the this is our parent materials. Then when we are putting certain kind of gas molecules or maybe when we are keeping those substrate materials into some medium maybe either some gas medium or maybe some gas environment. So, that gas molecules may go inside the parent material through its pores. So, that techniques or maybe the technology is known as the absorption, but adsorption is totally different. Adsorption is that that through pores the material or maybe that gas molecules will not go inside simple it will condense on the free surface onto the material substrate itself. So, that means it will make a one kind of coating onto the substrate material. So, now when we are talking about the adsorptions, so first let us know that which material we are using or parent material that is known as the adsorbent, the solid where adsorption takes place. So, actually that gas molecules or maybe some other functional molecules are trying to stick onto the surface of this material. So, this is our base material which is known as the adsorbent. Then what is the molecules are going to stick? or maybe are going to uh, sit onto the base material that is known as the adsorbate that gas absorbed on the surface of the solids. So, these gas molecules which is already stick together onto the surface is known as the adsorbate and before that which gas molecules can stick onto the surface. So, before sticking those particles or maybe the molecules is known as the adsorptive materials. So, adsorbate before being absorbed on the surface. So, before sticking the material or maybe that particle is known as the adsorptive when it is sticking 
or maybe we, it is uh, depositing onto the surface, then it is known as the adsorbate and on which material it is depositing, it is known as the adsorbent. Now, there are two types of depositions, generally adsorptions is taking place onto the material. One is called the physioabsorptions, where the physical adsorptions due to the van der Waals force is taking places, because you know that when the molecules, molecules will come together, so there will be a van der Waals force will acting in between that. So, outside of the surface always there is having some kind of van der Waals force due to that van der Waals force some molecules or maybe the some gas molecules will be attracted towards the substrate due to that the physio absorption will be taking place and another one is called the chemi absorptions where by it is doing by the chemical bonding that means some kind of chemical reaction is going on so that the material is coming and it is depositing onto the surface itself and in between that some kind of chemical bonding formations is taking place by which the material or maybe that gas molecule is staying onto the surface itself. So, if we are going in uh, elaborately for this physical absorption and chemical absorptions, so first is called the physical absorptions is among the methods that are conceptually straightforward in the surface modification of nanoparticles for good stability and hydrophilicity in suspensions. So, that is the property. So, when we are going for the physical absorptions that is the good stability can be observed and hydrophilicity can be observed. But when we are talking about the chemical adsorption process or maybe the chemical absorption process is adsorption which involves a chemical reaction between the surface and the adsorbate by generation of a new chemical bonds. So, what I am telling that simple due to the van der Waals force if some material will come and stick onto the surface or maybe some gas molecules can stick onto the surface that is known as the physical absorption where the stability is good and the hydrophilicity can be achieved and due to that chemical absorption process when that materials or maybe that uh, uh, third materials or maybe the uh, extra impure materials is gain, uh, uh, is uh, doing some kind of reactions onto the surface and due to the chemical bonding that material is sticking with the substrate. So, that is known as the chemical adsorption process. So, now here actually we have given some comparisons between the physical and chemical adsorption process. So, first one is called the physical adsorptions. So, what does it means? The forces operating in this case are weak van der Waals force as I already discussed that when the material is coming nearer to the base material. So, there is a weak van der Waals force is acting in between that by which that gas molecule is sticking onto the substrate itself. But when you are talking about the chemical adsorption process, the forces operating are chemical bonds may be ionic or maybe the covalent bond is forming in between your gas molecules or maybe that functional materials and the substrate itself. Then heat of the adsorptions is low about 20 to 40 kilo joule per mole. In this particular case, because it is simply uh, coming and sticking by the weak van der Waals force, so heat is very very less heat generations, but in this particular case we are doing some kind of chemical reactions. So, due to that chemical reactions the heat generation is more. So, the heat of adsorptions is high about 40 to 400 kilo joule per mole. Then the process physical adsorption process is totally the reversible process. Desorptions can occur by increasing temperature or decreasing the pressure. Yes, of course, because a simple molecule it is coming onto the surface and it is sticking onto the surface of that parent material. So, if we heat that material, if we heat that material, then automatically uh, that can be uh, physical modifications can be done. So, the process is reversible, that means if we simply heat that material, then the material can or maybe that monomer or maybe that gas molecule can simply evaporate. And not only that, desorption can occur by increasing temperature or the decreasing pressure. The process is irreversible because this is the chemical reaction process. So, so it is the irreversible process. We cannot take out that functional materials from the parent body so easily. Efforts to free the adsorbed gas give different compounds because it can change the parent body properties too. 
then it does not require any activation energy because it is the simple methods. It requires some kind of activation energy to start the chemical reactions because chemical reaction is a vital parameter for this chemical adsorptions. Then it takes place at the low temperature and decrease with increase in the temperature. So, it takes place at low temperature because we simply due to the van der Waals force it is sticking. So, we no need to put any extra added temperature at that particular system and decrease with increase in the temperature because that, that temperature also be reduced because when the pressure of that system will be increased. And same thing this type of adsorption increases with increase in temperature. So, adsorption process increase because the chemical reactions is going on. So, if we put any extra added temperature to that particular system automatically the adsorption process will be increased. Then it is not specific in nature that all gases adsorbs on all solids to the same extent. Yes, of course, because it is depend upon the compatibility in between the gas molecule and in between the substrate itself. So, it is not specific in nature that all gases because all gas molecules and in between the uh, parent body or maybe the substrate there will be some van der Waals force will be acting so that that gas molecules can stick onto the substrate itself. But it is highly specific in nature that absorption occurs only by the possibility of formation of chemical bonds. So, this is the more con more, more conformal because we are trying to do certain kind of chemical reactions. So, that due to that high chemical bonding that material will stick onto the surface itself. So, the failure of chemical adsorption is very, very less. Then for physical absorptions, it increases with the increase in surface area. And the thing is that if the surface area will be increased, so automatically the van der Waals falls will be also increased. So, the gas molecule, it can be trapped more easily. But in the chemical absorption process, it also increases with the increase in the surface area. And for physical ab absorption, it forms multi molecular layer because the gas molecules it is sticking onto the surface. Then again that molecule gas molecules also generating little bit of van der Waals force due to that the other gas molecules are we can be absorbed. So, like that it multi layer can be formed for this physical adsorption process, but chemical adsorption process it is only the chemical reactions is going on due to that the material is sticking onto the surface. So, that it should be the uni molecular layer can be formed. Now, ne the next technology is known as the self assembly. So, it is the method of making one, two or maybe the three dimensional structure of nanomaterials. So, the major driving force for self assembly include electrostatic reactions. So, generally for the electric bath depositions, generally we can see this kind of technology over there. Then the major driving force for self assembly include electrostatic interactions, surface tensions, capillary forces, hydrophobic interactions and biospecific recognitions. So, by this technology we can make both the samples desired one and the undesired one. So, undesired one simply we can take it out and we can go for the desired ones. How to? Host guest interactions are typically seen in biological systems, but also regularly used in the assembly of non biological molecules through these weak interactions. Electrostatic interactions is essential in layer by layer cell assembly of poly electrolyte cells. So, generally, this kind of deposition is taking place under the layer by layer. So, the thing is that whatever the material we are trying to put or maybe we are trying to attach onto the substrate itself. So, either we can see that material can be trapped by the parent body so that it cannot easily come out because the interaction in between this uh, parent body and in between these gas molecules is very, very low. So, anytime they can come out. So, if we prefer that always that small gas molecules should be trapped inside the system so that it not easily come out. And of course, there is some kind of undesired systems where onto the surface that molecules can stick together, but due to the very, very uh, uh, weaker bonding, maybe that material can come out from the system itself. So, that is why 
this technology is called the self assembly and the another added advantage of this system is that suppose I am having some uh, electrostatic bath. So, where I am putting the samples then I can start the chemical reactions and no need to add anything extra. So, if I can keep that uh, uh, system for a longer time, so the chemical reactions is going on going on in between that and that will be occur maybe due to the electrostatic interactions or maybe the surface tensions or maybe the capillary forces or maybe the hydrophobic interactions or maybe the bio specific recognitions. No need to add any extra heat, no need to add any extra added environment to the system. So, just I have to keep that system for a longer time into the environment. So, the chemical reaction is going on. So, that is why it is called the self assembly treatment. Next we are trying to discuss about the surface modifications based on the polymerizations. So, from this particular uh, heading we can understand that here that we are trying to modify the surface, but we are trying to introduce some kind of polymer on top of that by which it is forming some kind of polymerization techniques or maybe some kind of polymeric chain and by that polymer we are coating that nano composites or maybe that nano fillers. So, polymerization is a process of reacting monomer molecules together in a chemical reactions to form polymer chains or three dimensional network. So, simple I am having a monomer when I am doing the chemical reactions by this chemical reactions this monomer will attach with an another monomer this monomer will attach with another monomer like that they will make a cloud which is nothing but the polymer. So, this method is known as the polymerization process. So, here the factors that affecting the polymerizations is called first the solvent, then initiator who is which is initiating the experiment, then monomer to initiator ratio and the surface structure. So, anyhow I am having the monomer, first I have to agitate that monomer by some initiator, then that monomer initiator reaction will be taking place due to that it will be activated and it will form the polymer. So, here these all are the factors affecting polymerization process for given nanoparticles. Here we have given one empirical examples of this polymerization process. So, initially I am having methyl methacrylate ok. Then by free radical vinyl polymerization process we are making it as a polymethyl methyl acrylate or maybe which is known as the PMMA which we are using for the biomedical purposes which we are using for our contact lens purposes. So, like this polymerization process we are making that methyl methacrylate to the polymethyl methacrylate. So, suitable types of reactions are free radical or maybe the ionic polymerizations. So, by free radical reactions or maybe the ionic polymerizations we can change from monomer to polymer. Mainly nanostructures of metals, metal alloys, metal oxides and other materials have been modified with polymers. So, sometimes while doing the polymers we can do the modification of that polymerization also. So, while doing the polymerization we can add some kind of extra nanoparticles which can add it to the systems and which can make a hybrid polymer over there. So, PMMA polymethyl methyl acrylate is popular polymer used for such surface modifications and that is also a very nice promising polymer which we can use for the biomedical purposes and which can act or maybe in uh, while making this uh, methyl methyl acrylate to polymethyl methyl acrylate we can add some kind of metal some kind of metal oils some kind of metal oxides to the systems so that it can make certain kind of hybrid polymer structure at that particular time. Next, we are going to discuss about the surface modifications based on organic reactions. So, here we are trying to do the actually the grafting. So, there are two types of grafting or maybe uh, one is called the direct grafting, another one is called the indirect grafting, but basically here we are going to discuss about the direct grafting. So, direct grafting through chemical absorption has been applied for the surface modification of nanoparticles having a strong covalent bonds with functional molecules. So, here from this particular figure you can understand that we are having some parent materials or maybe that nano fillers or maybe that nanoparticles on which due to the grafting methods or maybe due to some other organic reaction methods we are attaching some kind of functional groups on top of that. So, these attaching groups or maybe that organic reactions can be done by four distinct methods. One is called the direct grafting, 
where the chemical absorption process is taking place that means chemical reaction is taking place due to that chemical reactions some chemical bonding is occurring some kind of uh, covalent, non covalent or maybe some kind of uh, pi pi bonding is taking place by which the material is sticking onto the surface itself. Then for instance other bonds generated between dextran nanoparticles and aliphatic or aromatic groups are used to make the surface hydrophobic. So, sometimes generally we can change the surface modifications or the surface properties of that particular material by adding the suitable material to that system. Suppose I want to make the system to the hydrophobic, so then I can use certain kind of materials which can show the hydrophobicity into the nature or maybe the hydrophilicity into the nature. Then salinization is one such method where the silanol groups on silane coupling agents. SCAS react with the surface species. So, salinization is also another technique by which we can make our material that it can show some kind of silane groups on top of that because that material is very very environmental friendly and it can uh, withstand with a higher temperature. So, by uh, doing the chemical absorption process we can attach some kind of silicon group into the system itself. Then another uh, examples is that hydrolysis and polycondensation of silicon CH group itself and with surface hydroxyl groups are a powerful combination of creating new coating layers. So, for getting some also some advanced properties by hydrolysis and polycondensation method we can attach the CH group with the uh, uh, silicon itself and for the betterment or maybe the enhancement of some properties. So, here what actually we are trying to uh, show you that by some doing the organic reactions we can do the modification of our surface properly. So, next slide actually we are going to discuss the surface modifications by the inorganic layers. So, in the previous cases we have added that materials which is organic in nature. Here we are adding some materials which is inorganic in nature. So, inorganic materials are chosen to improve stability and to introduce new electronic photonic, magnetic, mechanical and surface chemical properties to particles. So, this is the figure actually here where we are having some kind of nanoparticles or maybe some kind of nano fillers on top of that or maybe like a core cell structure we are adding some kind of coating materials or maybe some kind of other materials by some inorganic materials. So, here common choice of inorganic layers include silica, titania, zirconia and other metal oxide that are readily obtainable through solution phase approaches. So, there are different approach approaches as I have already discussed earlier, sol gel methods, some kind of uh, different techniques like PBD, CBD. So, what we are trying to do? I am having that nanocomposites or maybe the nanoparticles. I am trying to coat that nanoparticles by some inorganic materials. What are those inorganic materials? That may be the silica, that may be the titanium that may be the zirconia, we have gone through some silicon coating or maybe that silica coating, we have gone through some zirconia coating on carbon nanotubes, we have gone through some titania coatings on tungsten carbide, we have gone through some other metal oxides like alumina or some kind of hardest material silicon carbide coating onto some aluminum metals ions or maybe metals or maybe that magnesium materials for implant purposes. So, there are n number of applications where we are trying to modify our uh, nanoparticles or maybe the nano fillers by using some inorganic materials. So, silica which has been widely used since the invention of the Strober method which was originally designed for the preparation of silica nanoparticles with the well controlled spherical shape and size using alcoholic solvents, catalysts and alloxide precursors. So, in this particular case you can see that the core shell is also trapped by some small small molecules or maybe a single molecules can be trapped and then top of that by layer by layer technique we can do the coating of different inorganic materials on top of that. So, that is why these particular things is known as the surface modifications with inorganic layers. Then we are going to discuss about several other techniques. First one is called the grafting of silence, then polymer grafting 
and the third one is called the grafted polymer. So, these all are the also three different advanced techniques by which we can modify our nanofillers, by which we can modify our nano composites and then that nanofillers and maybe the nanoparticles can be used for advanced surface engineering purposes. So, first is called the grafting of silanes. So, generally organosilanes here consist of silane with at least one silicon carbide or uh, maybe that silicon carbon bond is present. So, generally we are trying to use this organosilanes for modification of these nanoparticles. So, here the organic change varies in functionality and size and then bifunctional silanes from spontaneous self assembled monolayers can be achieved. Then deposition of self assembled monolayers of wide variety of silane molecular on flat polished metallic and metal oxide surfaces are extensively studied using their gaseous or maybe the liquid phase reactions. So, what we are trying to do? We are trying to modify our nanoparticles, then nanoparticles we are trying when it is modified by the silanes, then we are trying to agglomerate all the nanoparticles together so that we can do the modifications of this material. So, suppose I am having some surface group on which we are attaching some kind of saline group over there, then top of that also by layer by layer technique we can add so many silanes layer of that so that we can do the modifications or maybe which is known as the organosilanes. So, example of organofunctional silanes group over here. So, in this particular case I am having that silane groups in which I am adding that gamma amino propyl thyroxy silane over there. So, I am attaching these materials in this particular case. In this particular case, I am having that silane group where I am having that vinyl trimethoxysilane over there. Then I am having some methacryloxysilane group over here, then in which I am trying to attach the gamma methacryloxy propyl thyroxy methyl silane and then we am I am having some epoxy silane group where I am trying to add this kind of gamma glycide oxy propyl thyethoxy methyl silane. So, these all are the different silane groups. So, the main motto of this particular techniques is that I am having one silane group and also the different silane groups can be attached with that particular materials because that different silane groups are having different principal uh, properties. So, when I am trying to attach the silane groups together, so they will give a number of added applications or maybe the added properties to the system itself. So, by choosing the proper silane groups easily we can modify our systems and maybe we can get the better properties. So, here is the grafting mechanisms of organosilane. First, then first, after that we are going to do that alkoxy groups are hydrolyzed over here. Then the silanol groups produced and the hydroxyl groups present on the surface proper particles react to give a strong SiO bonding, silane and oxygen bonding can be observed in this particular case. So, first the oxide particles are good candidates because of the presence of these hydroxyl groups at the surface. So, this is the first requirement. The interface between the silane and inorganic particles is a chemical bonding process where the chemical bonding is taking place in between the silane and the inorganic particles group. So, my more main motto of this particular system is that I am having some silane groups. I Either I can attach some kind of inorganic particles to that system or maybe I can attach certain kind of silane groups to that system. So, by do simply doing the chemical reactions. So, here by hydrolysis and condensation methods, so I am making some kind of silane groups over there. From that I am taking out the water molecules and I am getting the silane groups present in that particular system. And also in this particular system I am having the substrate on top of the substrate due to that hydrogen bonding I can attach some kind of silane groups to that particular systems or maybe some kind of bond formations can be taking when I am taking the water particles and I can put certain kind of heat over there. So, just giving some kind of heat and taking out the water or maybe the hydroxyl group from the 
uh, parent body, I can do the modifications of the silane onto the substrate itself. So, organofunctional silane hydrolysis, condensation and covalent bonding to an inorganic substrate group. So, finally, we can see that covalent bond has been formed in between the substrate and in between the silane groups. Next, we are going to discuss about some polymer grafting using grafted silence. So, here the organofunctional group present on the silane can react with functional groups of the polymer or with monomers before polymerizations. So, in this particular case what we are trying to do I am having the silane groups. So, before polymerizations I am trying to attach some kind of functional groups over there or maybe some kind of inorganic materials over there onto that silane groups and after that we are trying to do the modification of these particular materials. So, here moreover a diffuse interface between the two components can be established due to inter diffusion of polymer chains and tangling with the silane. So, this is the main uh, parameters for this particular case. The performance of nanocomposites can be improved by good compatibility and even reactivity between the silane and the matrix. Yes, of course. So, first initially what we are doing? We are trying to uh, add the silane with our polymer matrix or maybe that with our uh, parent material. Then again we are trying to attach some kind of inorganic materials with that silane itself. But now this is totally the different methods. So, now first we are taking the silane materials, then on that we are adding the inorganic materials, then the whole materials we are doing for the polymerization process. So, that is why this is giving the more, more good compatibility and reactivity in between your silane and the matrix itself. Then grafting organosilanes on the nanoparticle surface enables the interface between fillers and matrix to be chemically changed by means of a rapid and simple protocol. So, the interaction in between your um, filler material and your substrate material are more stable and more good. Then problematic reactions between the silane functional groups and the polymer chains remains because of inter diffusion is limited by the short length of the organosilane carbonated chains. Yes, of course, there is a small disadvantage has been presented over there which is due to the having the short length of organosilane carbonated chains. If the chain size will be bigger then maybe this problem can be solved. Then next one is called the grafted polymer. So, in that particular case the monomer polymerization can enable some monomer molecules to migrate inside particles aggregates dispersing the aggregate particles and improving the matrix particle cohesion. So, there are actually two theory one is called the grafting two and one is called the grafting form. So, before going to know that about that what is going on first we have to know that two main ways to carry out this grafting technology because this grafting technology has been divided into two parts one is called the grafting two or maybe the grafting on two another one is called the grafting form. So, when we are talking about the grafting two, the polymer chain ends react with functional groups on the nanoparticles. The polymer matrix can also be modified so that it reacts to. So, in that particular case I am having that substrate, then I am having some polymer chain, that chain is react with the nanoparticles itself. So, that is why it is called the grafting two. So, and for the grafting form, the polymer is formed from an initiator or monomer grafted on the surface of the particles. So, in this particular case, this polymer chain it is forming from these inorganic materials or maybe the whatever materials is attached to the substrate. So, one case the polymer chain is attached to the systems that is why it is called the grafted two. Another case from that inorganic materials the polymer chain is forming that is why it is called the grafting form. So, by these two methods we can do the modification of that surface itself. The length of the grafted polymer chains at particle surface may lead to high levels of interdiffusion and tangling with matrix chain thus contributing to the good cohesion between the different material phases even if there are no reactions between them. So, always we prefer that this polymer chain should be little bit bigger so that 
it can be attached with several functional groups so that the modification of these nanoparticles are more good or even if we can get the better properties in terms of some kind of physical properties or chemical properties of that particular nano filler. First one is called the grafting unto. So, polymer end chain can be modified after polymerization to enable grafting on the particle. Yamoto et al have shown that the addition of a silent group enables grafting after anionic polymerizations. So, in that particular case the polymer chain is directly attaching with the inorganic particles or maybe the substrate directly. So, that is why it is called the grafting too. Silane groups are not the only possibilities, there are some other possibilities also present. The nanoparticle surface can be modified by other reactive groups such as chlorine, epoxy chloropropane, acid and organic isocyanate or a pre polymer that reacts with the surface. So, except the silane group also we can attach this kind of material to the systems also. End chains can also be modified by adding polymer chains equivalent to that of the matrix in order to facilitate the interdiffusion. That means, here we can add some materials in between the polymer chains in between the silence which can act as a binder in between the in between these two which will help you to facilitate some interdiffusion over there. And also this has been shown by Park who grafted polyacrylamine onto polycarbonate to study the effect of the coupling agent on the interfacial properties of a polycarbonate matrix composites reinforced by carbon fibers. This is also a very very good examples where we have seen that grafting onto of the polymer chain or maybe that silane groups or maybe some inorganic materials has been done onto that polymer substrate itself. Then the next one is known as the grafting from. So, in that particular case many polymerization process have been developed to form polymer chains on the nanoparticle surface. So, here the common polymerization methods are anionic polymerization methods, cationic methods, polycondensation methods and the radical polymerization methods. So, when we are talking about the protocols for radical polymerizations that atom transfer radical polymerization is taking place. Then irradiation with cis, uh, cobalt uh, 60 gamma rays mixture of particles and monomers and solvent are irradiated to produce the radicals and graft the polymer onto the particle surface. Then UV induced graft polymerization is taking place, chemical oxidative graft polymerization between monomers and amine groups present on the particle surface. So, this is the simple one, simple what I am doing, I am trying to use my substrate on top of that I am trying to put one material, then from the outsource I am giving some energy, that energy may be some UV light or maybe some other things by which the polymer chain is growing or maybe that silane group or maybe some other reactive functional groups is going at that particular point. So, that is why it is called the grafting from. Now, we have come to our last slide which is nothing but the summary that in whole if we are going to summarize this study that we have already discussed some out of particular trained techniques for surface modifications of the nanomaterials, some adsorption techniques like physioabsorptions and chemiabsorptions and difference between them have been clarified and detailed we have explained. Self assembly and polymerization also modify the surface, modification using organic reactions and using inorganic layers have also been discussed in this particular lecture, various other techniques for modification of surface have also lightened that is grafting of silence, polymer grafting using silence and grafted polymers. So, by telling all these discussions where we have tried to give you a overall glimpse that how are the different latent latest techniques or maybe the latent latest approaches by which we are trying to modify our nanoparticles and that can give the better surface properties. Thank you.